I wonder if talking to him again does anything. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. It's right there. Can you see it? Point. Mm -hmm. He doesn't finish the sentence. One letter is all he can produce. His hands are numb and he stares at them. Nothing. Nothing is what he tried to say. I'll leave you be for now. All right. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something. You take long, deep breaths. Slow down your pulse. Don't move yet, and when you do, be light as a feather. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. Whisper. That's the... Say something to it quietly, something like... Electrochemistry medium 10. Approach carefully. But we have a very high chance of passing it because we have Lena's childhood experience. Approach carefully. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Again, I want to point out, I almost failed that check, because I rolled a 3, and that's like the, the the lowest one I could have that is a successful roll. But not with my rolls. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Look behind you, it's smelling me. This is so sick, it likes you. The kid's mouth is agape. Because, of course, Kuno was also the one that interacted with all the traps to get the locusts. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. Raise your hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. No, I don't think I will. Raise the other hand too. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you, praying to you. That's right, pray. Don't pray to me, I'm nothing. Put your hands down. That's right, pray. Unwittingly, the insect continues its stridulations. As it moves, tuft-like structures still pretending to be plants rustle along on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god. I doubt it, Half-Light. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. You know, it's foaming. Whoa! Maybe it's poison? Fucking hell! The kid watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, 
like burnt caramel as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell like summer burning. Okay, Inland Empire check, medium 11. Tell me, what are you doing? My Inland Empire is only three, but I spoke to the Hanged Man. I did not give up on the Phasmid. Knows of Parthenogenesis and nothing, which is what uh, Yosef just... I hate it. And it speaks. I exist too. I am a detective. Is this a dream? What is happening? What exactly are you? I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Fire burning. It's wunderbar. I'm ill. If I tell you what will happen, it's wunderbar. Yes. Holy is the Lord of hosts. And all the earth is filled with his glory. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half lit images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon. Transient. Deep. Moist. Intruded upon by what? Shades of plants and animals. An internal sensation. A swarm of sound. Tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearm. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an narrow funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth. Perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. You're the type of animal I would like to be. I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. The fuck is happening to me right now? Wow. That, that, yeah. I'm glad to be me. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleeping, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck, with eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute. It's hell. I changed my mind. I want to be you. It was very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. Yeah, I think I am. That must be incredibly hard. The Orthobots are in silence and meaningless awe of you. So that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. But from you, Banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Also that, the killer, I was born to detect you. I was born to detect the killer. He's in a bad state. Deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. Which explains why he's becoming less loot as this happened. You're destroying him. Very slowly, and only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me for too long. Then I'm destroying him. I mean, he's lasted 22 years. That's a pretty long time. Is this a dream? What's happening? No. You're awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lilies. We need to know. Perhaps it's sent to us by a god. Then all we can do is beat our fists against it, day after day with no answer. <sighs> I think we... 
it's human nature to find out more about the world around us, but we do need to know. I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. Wait, so... So you look like a reed and you eat reeds? Yes, they don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. Okay. What exactly are you? I am an unknown species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolandia Isoma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, cooling myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Sussurin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Semenese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions, until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Rebelshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Yes, accidentally, because I failed the check to actually hear them. Although they might say that even. Are you poisonous? Yes. I do not have a starter display. So I use a neurodegenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry. It is only destructive over long periods of time. Such as 22 years. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. That's insane. No. You are. The moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Megarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its effort coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. Ow. I suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Yeah, I mean, kinda. That's like the idea of inframaterialism, you know? You affect things through your thoughts and have a tangible effect, which is what causes, well, they're saying wiping out life. And it's technically in human nature to cause destruction, whether intentionally or unintentionally. So, yeah, replace them with nothing by accident. Okay, well, worse how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day? We'll just forget. Blink, quick. Have I always thought this way? But I want to blink and undo 12 billion years of matter expansion. I've already forgotten the whole world once when I drank too much. I'll be extra, extra careful not to blink stick insect, don't worry. Have I always thought this way? No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. I've already forgotten the whole world once. So it is already happening. Soon, one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this, that 
You know, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? Doesn't look like this spasm out. Kuno knows all about seizures. What does it look like? They're just staring at the giant insect. I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Cool. So is Kuno. Kuno's also having a vision of a giant insect. And it's real. Back off before it eats you. Okay. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. And I just want to point out as well, this entire conversation has been with the deserter out of shot. So when we turn back to them, things might have changed. No, there is one more. No, there are no more thoughts. Of all the creatures I've met, you're the kindest. Of all the creatures I've met, you're the scariest. Of all the creatures I've met, you're the most beautiful. Of all the creatures I've met, you're the kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. What woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, he smells of fires. So awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence. And it. Turn away from my ex-wife. I will. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meters thick insect to tell you that. Okay. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Up it goes. Just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Between those reeds there. Fucking elegant. The fuck? Is that ceramic? And more stuff, like a nest in the reeds? We should peep it. Fucking hell. What now? What now? The old man behind you says suddenly, he's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. Yeah, Grandpa's not looking so good. We need to check on him. Oh, you need to look at this foot. So. Be game. The Fairweather T500 Helmet, plus one half light, head as a battering ram, minus one suggestion, a fighter, not a lover. This monstrous looking bug-eyed ceramic helmet was in the Phasmid's nest. It still has some reeds sticking out of it. it smells of seawater, but otherwise it's wearable, if not exactly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary some. Yeah, we look like a, well, we look like Rude, who is a killer. And that's the final piece of the, the armor set, so you could get a full armor set if you had managed to get the boots off the body. But I don't think I want to wear that, so that's fine. And an item, a T932 rifle scope, a common 30mm sniper scope attachable to almost any bolt action 4.46 caliber. It uses an older style non-dotted range finding reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens, and it suffered water damage from its time in the Phasmid's dowry. And the boy itself. Evidence, Classier's passport. Okay, is it cracked yet? This well-traveled passport with visa stamped in it is issued by the Republic of Aranya. You found it in the Phasmid's nest on the island, you can open it for This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Aranya is issued to a black-haired woman called Katazina Alazier. Clausius hidden documents from the empty boy. She said the false passport would be for Anuk Maya Smith. Look at the photo. It's Clausia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. What is this doing in the Phasmid's nest? Fuck if I know. Maybe it's collecting shit. Like an octopus can get, like, curious. It says Cartagena Alassier. Okay, so what? Loop Kuno in on this? 
Yeah, and if we had Kim, he would know that, but Kuno's got no idea. Katalazina Alazia was supposed to be her real name. Where Klazia comes from, remember? God damn it. I told you she'd get lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now, in another city. She moves fast. He told me it was her real name, and it isn't this. It isn't even the name she said would be on here. True. Got lied to. Double lied to. I get it. You cops need the Kuno on stuff like this. No one lies to the Kuno. He nods with a stern and serious expression. What's her real name then? Kuno's gonna say, it's not any of the things you think it is. Kuno'd have to get deep into this shit, but whatever it is, you got played here, that's for sure. The girl on the passport looks at you with no answer. She is not Katazina Alazia, or Anuk Maya Smith, or Glazia. That much is sure. Okay. <sighs> All right, well, put the passport away. Hey, Josef. How are you doing? What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Look, how could you not see the phasmid? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. The, doors? the man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. Like an addict of some terrible substance. Wave your hand in front of his eye. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling, and he breathes slowly. The boy waves his hand in front of the old man's face. The trembling mouth appears to sigh. There's no other response. Yes, this rides him. We gotta bring him to a doctor. Good news, this solves our boat and piggy's problem. He's not going anywhere. He's trapped here. What happened to you, Mr. Dross? He's old and fried. Kuno's seen this, like, after a massive bender. Kuno's dad. I think it's the Phasmid. Old age and shock, yes. I think it's the Phasmid. Yeah, and then there's that shit. Gramps couldn't take it. It was too much. Quite a few things about that health check you did on him make sense now. He couldn't see it, Kuno. It's just the reads for him. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. I think he's addicted to that thing. Could it be there's something hormonal in his relationship with the Phasmid? I talked to the Phasmid, it said it was destroying him. He's been here for a long time, who knows how much of it's in its come. When I evaluated him, it seemed strangely animated. Yeah, Kuno knows hobos, and Kuno has never seen a hobo sharp like this after so many years of hoboing. Perhaps his animation is induced by something in the Phasmid. Yeah, yeah, because look at him now. Not so sharp, is he? And it's gone, left. Perhaps it's like, kept him going. Like the drink and the lightning keep my old man. Couldn't see it, Kuno. It's just the reeds for him. How? Like, it's pretty fucking huge. How? No response. Maybe this is how the Phasmid has stayed hidden all those years. Then how the fuck did we see it? Oh, oh wait. The longer it's there, like it needs time to sink in. And if you spend time with it. You forget it's there. Yo, you ever seen a giant fucking insect? His eyes widen as if to help him take the thought in. The, the... the old man stutters, then a sigh. I think he's addicted to that thing. Like, hooked on the lightning. He has displayed addict behavior, and not just a painkiller. True. He's got those gain eyes, doesn't he? Could it be there's something hormonal in his relationship to the phasmid? You mean, like, horny? Yes, he seemed a little off for a man his age. No, forget it, inspect the man. I mean, he kind of did. I mean, he was pairing on that Clasier party lady weirdly hard. Yeah, maybe. I talked to the Phasmid, it said it's destroying him. Talked, huh? You sure it didn't have a strange effect on you? You looked, like, hypnotized? Maybe. Anyway, it's only trying to remain unseen. The degradation is a side effect. Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know what degradation means. And I don't know about getting close to it like that. And staring at it for five minutes? You're one crazy cop. I guess I am. 
I like this. It's like we are forming Kuno to be a, a younger us, you know? Getting him to think about and make the connection between what the deserter's done, what the phasmid's done, and putting it all together by himself. I like that. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it in its company? Yeah, yeah. You see that too? Got a little jumpy there, didn't you? I know that vibe. I'm off me lightning too. We found some things in the phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him in the, the Oranese passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. Show him the helmet. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left. Wherever he is. The last embers have gone out. The war is over. I can't believe that helmet, man. I kicked it into the fucking ocean, and it washed up here. Or... Do you... Do you think the Phasmid brought it here? Wint, looking around. Show him the detached scope. I... I lost... Lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. Hey! Hey! You took the shot! Bang! And got rid of the evidence! Bug brought it back! Sound about right! Silence. Not even a sigh. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Hey. Yeah, old man. Hang tight. Let's slowly start shuffling off Death Island, okay? We're about done here. He looks to the Flag Tower. New task, the return. So I'm going to assume the return is use the boat to return to the mainland. Alright, well, I think this is probably the last chance I'll get, so I'm going to go ahead and make a save. Not that I think making a save will let me retry anything at this point, but it's nice to just have that finality of this is the last save before the end. And I, I'm still kind of gobsmacked that, that Phasmid was real, it just... We weren't looking for it in the right place. And Kim would have loved it. He wouldn't have loved it, but I would have liked to have seen his reaction. Alright. The air smells sweet and scary somehow. Ah, well, I, I guess, yeah, it's just head off. Just make our way back. See, the thing that I thought the the dilemma would be would be get Kuno to go to the boat and then get help with Lillian. But Lillian told us there wasn't enough fuel for it. I see him. This feels familiar somehow. You know, what's the ICM? Is this a case for Detective Kuno? Idiot Cat Moon, inside car motors, is Kuno magic? He is case solved. Sounds an awful lot like. RCM. It sounds like RCM. Revachol Citizen. Yeah. yeah, pig. That's letter shit for you. The alphabet. A white star. Point to it. Shit looks upside down to Kuno. He leans to the side, tilting his head. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? Dunno. Maybe. Sorta of looks like stars to Kuno. Or like islands maybe. Fuck does Kuno know? Thank you, Kuno. It's the DeLorean symbol of Insulinda, the face in the sea. Looks old. What is it still doing here? Who the fuck's gonna move it? The island janitor. Oh. He's got a point. 